In this tutorial, we're going to follow up with the last tutorial we did, which was organic uh, modeling of a composite structure using 3ds Max. And we're going to look at um, how do we start turning this into a building? How do we start thinking of it as a structure for a building? So what we'll need to do next is put floor plates in here and figure out the scale of this. So um, let's imagine this is, you know, a 30-story building. Um, there's a few ways we can start to embed program and floor plates within this. We could just contour the thing, but maybe that's less interesting. So what we're going to do is use what's called Isovis, and we're going to use Grasshopper to do this. So the first thing we're going to do is export this mesh, and we're going to go to File, and we're going to Export, and we're going to Export Selected, and I'll just save this to my desktop, and we'll call this OBJ format, and we'll just call this um, Form 2 or whatever you want to call it say save and then just use the defaults here I use um, Rhino as my preset and then I export and this might take a little while because it's a pretty complex mesh and then when it's done you can say done and the other thing we want to do still within max is create a line that's basically like a core through this geometry so the way we're going to do this is we're going to go into the front view. I just hit F, which is the shortcut for front view. And I'm going to go to my Create tab. Uh, my second little toolbar here is the shapes. These are the two-dimensional geometries. I'm going to go to Splines from the drop-down, hit Line. And what I want to do is create a line that like cuts through the voids of this project. And I could do multiple lines if I want. I'll just do one for this tutorial. So what I can do is just uh, click um, left-click below the form, left-click above the form right click when I'm done and then go to my modify tab and I'm just gonna guess here on how many um, uh, vertices to put along this line so I'm gonna go ahead and go to segment subobject level select this line and just pan down here until you see divide and I'm gonna just guess like five on this one and hit divide and you can see it adds then five vertices on that line so I can then go to my vertex sub-object level and I can start moving this around so it starts to snake through this form. And if I decide that I want more or less vertices, I can always select a vertice and delete it. Um, I can control Z to undo that. Or if I want to add vertices while I'm doing this, I can always hit refine here. Just make sure your snaps are turned off. And then you can click on the line and it will add a vertice. So you can deselect that when you're done. Let's say I don't really like that one, I can hit delete. So now I just want to move this form line into the form. So I'm going to go into perspective mode. And let's just uh, go to spline subobject level. And let's just get this kind of placed roughly where we want it. I guess I'll start it um, in this cavity here. Right, so he's going to kind of move around this form. And then go to your vertex subobject mode. So let's make it go into that cavity. Maybe I'll just move this back too so it stays in that cavity. So it's going up through that cavity. Um, let's keep it in there. Let's actually move it so it cuts back through the form there. And I'm just going to pause this video while I do this, but you get the idea. So I'm basically trying to create a line that does not intersect with this geometry. So I can move this down if I need it to go down right there. Let's move it back so it goes there. So you can see it's just kind of snaking through this form all the way up through the cavity. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this while I do that now. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've moved all my vertices. So you can see now this is not hitting the geometry anywhere. It's sort of going up through that cavity. It's crisscrossing through the different voids. And it looks pretty good. So this is the line we're going to use. You can think of this sort of as like an elevator core. So it's a void that's going to cut through the entire geometry. Um, and you could, again, you could do multiple of these, which would make a more interesting final result, I think. So uh, I'll just show you the first one, then you can do the rest on your own. So once you have that, let's export the line geometry. So when you export meshes, you need to export them as OBJ to Rhino. But when you export lines, you want to export as DWG. So we're going to um, export this one, export selected, um, and from here select DWG, and I'm going to call this line. And just make sure you're using like a 2004 DWG and say OK. 
and now all of that's exported so we can go ahead and close Max and then open up Rhino. Alright, so now we're in Rhino, we just need to import that geometry. So I'm going to go to File, Import, um, find that form, Form 2, Open, and here you just want to go ahead and say OK. And then it should export, everything should be oriented correctly, and there's your mesh. The other thing you want to import is the lines. So I'm going to go to File, Import, um, select DWG from the drop down. Find that line, open, and then import the line, and then there's the line. Okay, so now we're going to go into Grasshopper. Go ahead and open up Grasshopper. I already have the window open here. And we're just going to bring our mesh and the line into Grasshopper. So I'm going to double click, type in mesh, grab a mesh container, um, select my mesh, right click on the component, and set that mesh. Once I've set it, I can select it and hide it. And then let's do the same thing for the curve. Double click, type in curve, select the curve container, right click, or select the curve, right click, set one curve. And now we have both those geometries in. I can hide that in Rhino. And so now we have something we can work with. So the first thing we need to do, we're going to create floor plates in here. So we want to create an evenly spaced floor plate. If we just divide the line, unfortunately the line, if we divide by distance, is an irregular path. So it's going to get a little off. It won't just be divided evenly vertical. So what I'm going to do is find the endpoints of this line. Double click, type in endpoints. And we're going to connect curve to the endpoints, which will give us the endpoint, the start and endpoint. And then what we're going to do is put a base plane, just a basic XY plane on the bottom of this. Oh, let's actually do it at the start of this so so that the plane is down here at the bottom. It might be the end point for yours depending on how you drew the line. Okay, the next thing we want to do is explode this line. So I'm going to explode curve and I'm going to explode the curve here. And um, and then we're going to draw a new curve, a NURBS curve um, from the vertices of that curve. So you can see that'll give us just a little smoother form. And we'll just see what that does. Um, we can always change, we could always rebuild this curve to make it tighter fit if we want it, if it's running into our geometry or, or um, it's not quite what we want. But um, we'll just see what that does for now. And then the next thing we want to do is create a series of planes that vertically cut through that line and these will mark where our floor plates are. So to do multiple planes, we're going to make a series. First, we're going to move the plane. So we're going to move this plane geometry. We want to move it vertically. So I'm going to use a unit Z, which is a Z direction. And then we want to move a series of planes because we want to have multiple planes cutting along this line. So I'm going to use a series component. And then the start will be the very beginning, the first plane. And let's do a number slider for the number. So um, these are going to be the um, distance between the planes. So I'll just go from 0 to 100. So 0 less than 100. And we'll set that as the count. Um, and then the distance will be actually the, the number here, um, number of steps here. So I'm going to copy paste this and let's plug that in. And then let me preview this on. Okay, so now we have um, this, we need to plug that into the, the Z, so that's going to give us our planes. You can see the vertical planes there. And you can see that if I change the, the step here, that's the total number of planes. So I just want enough to go over the top of the form. And then the counts, uh, actually, so that's the distance there. So that's corresponding to the distance. My units are in inches. Um, so if you wanted, you know, it depends on the distance between your floor plates and the distance of the mesh. But I'm going to go with something like, I don't know, something like that. And then that's the count. So you want the count to be over the form so you make sure you get a floor plate that covers all of the geometry. If you want the floor plates to end earlier, you could always stop it earlier. Okay, so now we want to find the intersection of each of these planes on that curve. So I'm going to go to intersection and do physical, or sorry, mathematical, and I want to do curve plane. Um, these are my planes here. And then my curve is the new NURBS curve. And you can see that I'll then find different points along that line. Okay, so now I want to um, 
put planes along these points. So I'm going to do a new XY plane and I'm going to put a plane at each of those points. Let me go ahead and preview off some of this earlier stuff. Um, so we just have our new planes which are these guys and actually I can preview off this curve as well. Okay. And now we're going to use what's called the isovist component. And what this is going to allow us to do is it'll basically um, you can draw uh, lines from the center of this plane and the lines will extend until they hit geometry. It's very difficult to build a new form inside of one of these voids, especially how com um, when they're really complex and they kind of track vertically through the geometry. It would take forever to try to model a geometry that fits that exactly and you can't really use booleans because the complex the form is too complex and a boolean will just crash. So what we're going to do is use the isovis which basically extends rays out until it hits the form and then we can use those rays to define shapes which will then be the floor plates. So the first thing we need to do if you hover over this is um, provide planes. So these are the planes. We then need a number and um, a radius. So a radius it'll extend until it hits that radius. So if you want your floor plates to only you know seep out a little bit from this geometry that will be controlled by radius. So actually I'll just copy and paste these two sliders here and we'll use this one for number and this one for radius okay and then the mesh is going to be the obstacle so what you could do if you had multiple obstacles if you had an envelope outside here that you wanted it to also extend until you could put multiple envelopes in here but for this example I'm just going to use this one mesh and you could right click and contain multiple meshes so you could have multiple ones and you can see it basically extends points that um, intersect with the geometry so we could increase the number of those if we want a more refined we really want to get close to the geometry we could increase the count there if I increase the radius you can see it'll actually extend you know that's going to be the edge of the isovist if it doesn't hit uh, an obstacle so I could double click and I could increase this. Let's go to like 300 or 400 um, in case I want to go beyond the edge of the form. So that might be kind of nice. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make a P line, a polyline. And we're going to use these points to create those lines. You can see it starts creating like a floor plate, basically. It creates the outline of all of those different floor levels, which is interesting. Um, and now we're going to offset that so that it doesn't quite touch the geometry. So I'm going to do an offset curve. Um, I'm going to just copy and paste the slider for the amount. And we want to make sure that it's offsetting in the other direction. So it's offsetting on the inside. So all, it looks like mine's going outside. So I'm going to use a negative and just uh, make that a negative number. So you can see now it's offsetting only on the inside, which is what we want. The other thing, notice these little gaps here. Let me go ahead and turn these off, these points here. These gaps are being caused by um, right here in the P line. I have, I have it set as false. And you want to make sure you right click and set that Boolean to true so that it closes that gap and actually makes like a solid floor plate. So now let's just see what we have. I'm going to do a boundary surface. And there we go. We got some initial floor plates, which are interesting and starting to actually fill those voids. So you could see if I had multiple pass through here, I could do this multiple times and create different staggered floor plates if I wanted to. And then if I didn't want to just have it hit a radius, so you see it's becoming a circle because of the radius setting here, I could have another envelope out here that extends out to. So you could do anything you want from here. There's quite a bit you could do. You could start to create an envelope using those curves or, or some other kind of geometry. But I'm going to go ahead and try to make like little straight extrusions through here. So what I'll need is I'll need to project the curve from one curve to another curve and find that overlap. So what I'm going to do is move. I'm going to move the curves. So all of these offset curves, and I'm going to move it in the vertical direction. So I'll move it unit Z, and there's a lot of ways you could do this, but this is one way. Um, and I'm going to use the same, um, the step count I used here, which is the distance. So I want it to be the same distance, so I'm going to just use that slider and move it in the Z. And you can see it just moves all those curves up. 
So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to have to actually flatten. I want to work with these curves together. So I need to flatten um, this list of information and this list of information so that they can work with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the flatten. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy and then plug that into the flatten. So now both of these are in flattened lists. And um, it can understand. Uh, let's see if we pull out a panel here. Now it can um, it can it can understand a relationship between the index zero in this list and the index zero in this list. However, we moved these lines up, right? So we moved them up. So we actually want to um, uh, kind of create a connection between list zero item here and then index one here because everything's been moved up. So to do that, we need to shift one of our lists. So we want to just shift this list. So we'll just pick this top one here. I'll plug this list in. And then we want to shift it one, because we moved it up one index item. So I'm going to right click on this and set my integer to one. It's already set. Um, so that's all set. And so now uh, I've shifted this list. And I can delete these two panels. And I can now operate between that curve and that curve. So the next thing I want to do is actually graph the list. Because I've shifted them, they're now on the same level, so they can operate in, uh, together. But now I don't want to have them operate from one full list. I want each one to be on its separate list so I can connect those two. So now, after I've shifted them, I need to graph this tree. So I'm going to copy, paste, graph that, copy, paste, graph that. And so now if I have a panel, you can see that there's one curve on um, each separate list. So now when I uh, work with these, it's gonna, um, the first curve is going to work with the second curve. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to do a region intersection. I want to find the intersection of these two curves. So if I look at that curve and that curve, I want to find out where they intersect and only use the intersection because I'm going to extrude that intersecting form. If, if, for example, um, I just use one of the curves, it's going to extend up, and then there's going to be this open space here where this uh, floor plate does not cover the space below. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. I'm going to plug this one into this one, and that will give me the intersection um, of those two. Okay, so next thing I want to do is um, extrude. So I'm going to extrude this geometry, or this curve. And I'm going to extrude this also in the unit Z. And actually, I could just use, if I wanted to, the same value here. And you should, it should be extruding. So you can see I'm actually extruding in the wrong direction. So, because I have that problem where this uh, floor plate is, is not covering that room. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude these in the negative direction. And now everything's good. So that's basically the intersecting, uh, the intersection of those two, and it's extruding down. And now I have these floor plates that uh, perfectly fit within this very complex geometry, and they're totally habitable and flat floor plates. So the last thing I can do, if I wanted to, I could start, you know, from here, I could start to extrude different uh, mullions and and add internal program. Now that I have these um, floor plates here. I could start to um, select individual floor plates and with the list item component and do individual things, but now I'm just going to go ahead and bake these. And then now that I have these baked, I can re-export these into Max. So I'm going to go to File, Export Selected, and once again we're going to use an OBJ file format. Uh, I'll call these plates. Say OK. OK. And then if we go back into Max, I can then import these um, OBJs. And so I go to Import, Desktop, Import. And the one thing to note here is when you import from Rhino to Max, you want to deselect this flip ZY axis. Otherwise, it'll be flipped horizontally. And I'm also going to import this as an editable poly. And I'll just import it as a single mesh. That way, I can operate it on all of it as one edit poly. So then go ahead and say Import. And there you go, you have your meshes. So you could also export and bake the floor plates if you want to. But this is a really nice way to create um, kind of a complex um, program and complex structure inside of this other 
uh, more organic form.